How's it going? I have to find a new meditation spot because this. <laughs> so I don't entirely know if this is good enough, to be honest. It's, it's not the best. But I sort of need to travel pretty far out, I think, to get the solitude, or at least take a while to find a new spot. I think this is alright for now. I'm also <laughs> kneeling down. Uh, not kneeling, squatting. Okay, so I'll probably have my eyes closed for most of this because I find it easier to talk with my... What's the word? correct science -y word? I don't know. Visual stimuli gone. I've got quite a lot to say and I don't know if I'll be able to do it all in this one sitting or squatting. And most of the important things will come with listening to me time so if you have the attention span of a rat you just won't hear most of the information and this is as far as you'll get but if you're actually you know invested in interested in this channel and the stuff that I do I'm sure you'll make it to the end and that's all that matters really the start sort of acts as a filtration process and then I can get to the good stuff so I'm actually gonna try sitting down it might be all right if I start getting bitten I'll find out Oh, that's great. I just put my hand in poop. Bloody wombats. <laughs> okay. That's... That's gonna trigger my... Not that it's my main center in regards to my obsessive compulsive disorder, but I do have the conventional obsessive compulsive disorder symptoms as well. So that's very triggering. <laughs> Yuck. Um... So... First of all, I just want to say, I haven't seen Alien Romulus yet. Um, I'm probably going to, but I'm in no rush to really watch it, to be honest. Ever since I took up meditation, and there wasn't anything else out to that sentence, really. Ever since I took up meditation, I don't really see an interest in watching things too often. It's not... I don't rush for the dopamine of stories and stuff, because most of the time I make up stories in my own head, and my own brain entertains me so I don't really need other people to come up with like fantastical sci-fi stuff but I can just generate it on my own and inside um, hopefully soon um, lucid dreams more frequent lucid dreaming but I do want to watch it just cuz it's sort of a ritual now watching all the new alien films that come out okay so I think a nice way to start this off is probably with a little bit of nicety and relation to a particular topic that exists on this channel in abundance and that would be the Yaucha. The Yaucha have always fascinated me on multiple levels and especially as of recently as I've learned more things about the way our universe works and a bunch of different sciencey stuff but in essence I don't think I've been able to ever articulate it in a proper, elegant way, but they are a fascinating extraterrestrial civilization. And their whole tribal theme mixed with their honor code is something that I found very fascinating, and their honor code in particular has been something that I've adapted over the years to my own existence. Even though it is just a fictional story, their honor code is very reminiscent of a lot of backgrounds and societies that have, have existed throughout human history. I'm pretty sure in a way they're a little bit similar to some of the ancient Japanese. But um, I really, I really enjoy the Yaucha. They're a really cool species. Um, I'm sure there's quite a few jokes you can put in there because I've done Minecraft <laughs> videos. <laughs> I just realized that might flag the comment section as uh, something inappropriate because uh, people can't take jokes anymore. Anyway, something I've unfortunately experienced that has gone, that has chucked a wrench in this whole construct of an ego I call Yuland or Yolandos is my experience with marijuana. Now I had a video up 
a while ago where I was talking about it openly. And honestly, it was too early to put out a video like that. I needed more experience. And to be fair, I don't think anyone ever has an infinite amount of experience with a particular topic. I think there's always things to be learned non-stop. But I, I think the best way to explain this is to sort of explain what marijuana did to me. So, on the upside, when I first got very bad issues with my back, which I found out, by the way, is mostly musculoskeletal, finally, lots of money later. <laughs> lots of time, lots of suffering, lots of pain, and I try to call, I don't call it pain anymore because pain has such a negative annotation to it, strain and discomfort. But lots of that later, and yeah, musculoskeletal. At the beginning, marijuana was a good way to relax. However, the beginning of it was like this mind expansion, this it dissolved all of the walls that I've put up over the years since coming out of the uh, adolescent stage, I think is the correct term. Because during the childhood and adolescent stage is mostly when you soak in most of the information and stuff. Um, it's mostly when you're just doing whatever, whatever the fuck you want without ramifications or care for ramifications. And you're in a very... I know there's kangaroos near here, but I'm mostly not worried about them. I just don't like people. Or well, wombats given the fucking poo. <laughs> anyway, you're in a very influential stage of your life. So, one of the greatest things about my marijuana experience was the mind expansion. The dropping of all these walls again. The uh, being open to new ideas as an adult, which is an amazing experience because we're conditioned within this society to be if it's not in front of me it does not exist that's it <laughs> we're so conditioned within this capitalistic society to be these worker bees and cog wheels and to not question anything ever and it was nice to be able to break away from that even though I was to some degree always aware of this it broke me away even more however that dissolvement of the walls that make up who you are you know when I can sense I'm not alone it's just what what being an entity is near me is it a kangaroo is it a fucking zombie <laughs> that dissolvement of all the walls unfortunately got rid of my the honor wall the care wall for ramifications the very intricate structure that was built over such a long amount of time and put up to number one protect me against things and number two protect others from the stup stupidity that exists within my own human existence because humans at their base core have primal instincts and primal stupidity and one of the things I prided myself so well on was being self-aware of all of that and keeping it behind the wall. I've made a lot of mistakes since going on marijuana and I think the uh, THC, the, the main psychoactive ingredient in marijuana or cannabis, whatever you want to call it, has a lot of potential for mental health but I think Having it medicinally and unsupervised can lead to horrific things. And that's what happened to me. One of the things that I really want to get off my chest, just making sure I'm recording still, is I was in a very desperate place for a while. With the Yolandoverse movies, I, I was in dire need of... It is a kangaroo. Hello. You're not going to be able to see it. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I was in a very dire need for, for money. And because of those walls were gone, I was like, oh, let's, um, let's just like put together all of the Minecraft videos and make a movie and do what all of these other YouTubers are doing to extract money from viewers. See, when I was doing that, I wasn't 
even aware of the whole structure and personality I had built prior to that because one of the things that having marijuana medicinally did also was fuck up my memory quite a lot while I was on it so you're not able to really recollect the past you're not able to really think about the future you're in the present only and in a way it's like a specific type of molecule that exists on planet earth to engage you in a flow state um, if you've heard of the flow state and that's that's pretty cool but it's also something that can be very dangerous as well not only to you physically but also to you on a social level a personality level to the connections you form to the the bonds you form and by the way this movie thing and monetizing them just for extra money when I was desperately in need of money and I st still am but it's just like accepting what you have and being grateful for what you have and then money doesn't really matter anymore but that's gotten to me on a very like an under, under like a subconscious level everyone around me when I would voice it would say don't worry about it it's fine don't just don't worry about it and to some extent I haven't worried about it but it rears its head every now and then and I feel in my heart that I need to get that out and there's a bunch of other things I've already gotten out with people around me that are not very specific to this channel but that is something that's gotten to me quite a bit and also the uploading of videos without actually thinking through whether or not that video is going to be good information that is just two things that have really gotten to me and I wanted to apologize for that um, even though no one probably even gives a shit and everyone around me is probably right and saying don't worry about it it's fine you're not hurting anyone literally as well a bunch of people I think over the years have been like hoping I reckon for like me to put them all in one video I turned off monetization for them now um, let me know if I should put it back on I don't really know if I should it's the whole honor thing it's come back since I've stopped smoking marijuana and eating it in a medicinal sense I would suggest it's an okay molecule to have occasionally for recreation or for experimentation do not have it medicinally, medicinally you either. Uh, blah. Do not take it medicinally. And also, I had very bad experiences with the medicinal marijuana itself, the one that they concoct in the laboratories. I had more success rate with almost every department that exists in regards to marijuana in my life when I was taking the one off the street. What the fuck? <laughs> so, yeah, the. I know as well that mental health and doubt go hand in hand together and I'm going through one of those stages at the moment where I've got a lot of doubt so what I could be saying right now could be just overreacting to something very minor it's a, it's a thing with obsessive compulsive disorder as well You're obs you'll obsess over, over a particular thing but then you'll do compulsions to stop this uh, uh, to stop this thing and then that makes it worse but um part of obsessive compulsive disorder is usually this sort of an obsessive personality behind it as well so um, I could be obsessing over very minute details that really just don't matter in the grand scheme of things I don't know it got to me quite a bit because I've always prided myself on being very honorable and distinguishing myself from all of those other fuckwits on YouTube who literally harvest their viewers for money and in that moment in time I did that and I did not like that at all looking back at it I didn't even realize what I was doing at the time and it it hurts to think about because that's not who I want to be and yeah I have a feeling there are some mistakes that have done irreputable damage as well in real life since this so this is sort of a warning to anyone who considers taking marijuana medicinally it's okay occasionally but don't have it full time and be aware that it literally dissolves the walls you have constructed within that define you as a person it drops everything and then you enter this flow state where there's no comprehension of results ramifications past future it's only present there are there is a lot of creativity that comes from it though as well there's a lot of pros and cons to it all in all though it's um it was a very stressful experience for me 
would I go through it again? No, thank you. <laughs> but it, it is what it is. Life happens. Things happen. I'm not... I think I'm not asking for forgiveness of anyone. I don't expect for forgiveness. And it may be like, this may be my autism, like super black or white or like overemphasizing an importance on very small minute details. But like, I'm not asking or expecting forgiveness. I just want people listening to understand what was going on within my mind. Because um, at the time I still had no idea and I'm still processing a lot of, um, what happened as well because it's very difficult to recollect the things that happened while I was on marijuana because most of it is just a mem like a jumbled memory that's another thing that marijuana does to you it fucks with your memory and I don't think I've really said this anywhere yet but the only thing that got me away from marijuana was the whole experience and then also on a neurological and chemical level I seeked magic mushrooms and they got me off but i would not suggest you do that unsupervised once again unsupervised unsupervised these molecules can do a lot of damage my personal belief at this current point in time is sort of similar to the way energy works psilocybin the active molecule or chemical whatever inside magic mushrooms is the positive polarity and marijuana is the negative polarity but that's a very autistic way of looking at it because they both have their pros and cons but for me Magic mushrooms pulled me back up to <laughs> pulled me back up to the light. Um, throughout all of this as well, I've been practicing meditation, even before I initiated marijuana. And I will say that meditation has been one staple that has existed throughout all of my experience over the last two two three years. I tried to do it before I was on marijuana, but it's very difficult. Also, something as well that we'll probably finish up with, because it's getting quite dark. Something fascinating that marijuana did as well. You know how I said the mind expansion? Before marijuana, I was like, my FOV was like set to 10. And this is how I explain having autism. Apparently I'm very high functioning but I don't think that's the correct terminology. Anyway, it's also a very vague term, high functioning. My FOV was set to 10. When I was on marijuana full-time, well, almost 24 seven, it was like I was neurotypical. My awareness and FOV just expanded to like 360 almost. That was very damaging for me and I got these sense of, this sense within me that like, like it's not natural for me to be like that because I'm naturally just autistic. I can hear you kangaroo or wallaby. That was very intriguing overwhelming and fascinating but because of the whole experience now with the mind expansion through the psych the psilocybin and the thc i think i've essentially upgraded my autism <laughs> um the fov i can sort of allow the fov to open up a bit more it's not it's not as much as it'll ever be on marijuana i used to make this joke non-stop and also this observation that I became neurotypical when I was on marijuana. <laughs> to some extent, it was sort of true, um, at least from my perception. But that was something fascinating. Before marijuana, before psilocybin, I was very, very like different in regards to my perception of reality in regards to aut my autism. Like the autism, it got upgraded. Um, or downgraded. It really depends on how you view a lot of the things. Because I don't want to insinuate that these things are, you know, should be taken. I think the correct thing to do is to, very vague, difficult topic to even give advice on, but just stay away from it. <laughs> Unless, I don't know. But all I'm doing is just giving my own experience and it's very fascinating, yeah. If you do, and I'm not, I'm saying, I'm telling you not to, if you do decide to go down the route of experimenting with these chemicals, these natural things that exist on our planet Earth, guy, I, oh my God, my legs and more shit. Um, be aware that you will go through some of the most difficult things you've ever been through in your entire life. What a lot of people don't say about the spiritual journey and the mind expansion is the start is happy happy duty 
is amazing. And then you meet your shadow and things absolutely shit hits the fan or you sit in shit like I just did. And I'm not talking like normal shit. I'm, look, I'm like talking like runny diarrhea gets inside your mouth and your nose and you get ill and you fucking go to hospital. I also tried to kill myself last year, but I'm in a good place now. But that was also, that's for another time. If you're interested in that, I can tell you on Discord if you ever talk to me on Discord. But honestly, it's not something I really want to talk about too often or ever really. But I think that's important for people to know to give you an idea of how fucking dark the spiritual journey can go. You face your own mortality. And when I say I tried to kill myself, I literally, when the cop grabbed my arm, I tried to jump off the bridge. So I'm just trying to emphasize how dangerous it is experimenting with these chemicals unsupervised. It is extremely dangerous. Anyway. That's my TED talk. Thanks for listening. <laughs> I'm in a better place now. I I am I am happy with the walls I have re-erected in regards to my ego and my honor honor code and how I try to go out of my way now to be a better person and if I see someone who needs help I will I will try my best to help them if I can. I won't put my own mental health in jeopardy to do so. But if I'm in a good state and I see someone needs help, I will, I will reach out to them. Because that is the right thing to do, for me at least. I don't really give a shit what is the right thing or wrong thing to do in regards to society. I care about in here. So, that's my TED Talk. I'll see you in the next one. Adios.